come from? And then he did this, he replied. The servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into the bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Amen. You guys can be seated. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Topic of consideration, are you a seed or a weed? Seed or a weed? You know, seed, we're talking about seed, we've been talking about harvest. Praise God. And we see here in verse 24, Jesus told him another parable. He, it's about his fourth parable, I think. If I'm not mistaken, he told him about. He said, the kingdom of God, of heaven, is like a man so good seed in his field. And us, we are the field of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We are the field. Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus, where that's where Jesus has come from, he has put a seed inside of us before we were born. Amen. Amen. We, we, are, we, we have all come from a seed. Yes. We all have seed in us, right? Yes. Good seed. Because the kingdom of heaven don't play any bad seed. God don't waste seed. God, God is the, the, you know, Jesus is the Lord of the harvest. You know, he knows exactly how to farm. He knows exactly how to plant. So when he planted us here, right, we are his children, we are his seed, right? There's some things inside of us which consist of the kingdom of heaven. Because that's where he planted from. That's where his heart is, the kingdom of heaven, right? And we see that in verse 25, it says, but while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So we see that as you sleep and as you don't pay attention, that time of opportunity is given for the enemy to come in and sow his seed. That's right, that's right. His seed is not seed, but it's weed. Mm -hmm. His weed that he wants for you to, 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 to get distracted by is the worries of this world. Because the weed signifies belief, right? And the weed signifies unbelief. What the enemy wants to do is take away your belief system. He wants to take away your belief in God, the belief on the kingdom of heaven, that it can provide your needs, it can provide the very thing that you ask it to do. But the thing about it is that God put the kingdom of heaven inside of you. So the very thing that you need is, 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 is inside of you already. But what you got to do is believe and then speak the very thing that you need. See, it's just as simple as that. It's easy as one plus one is two. But the problem that makes it hard is that if you don't believe, that's what it becomes hard to you. Because the unbeliever has no faith. The unbeliever do not believe on the kingdom of heaven because it cannot, the natural man can't understand the spiritual thing. So when you walk in the spirit, right? Right, you on the job, you in the world, you you out there, we witnessing Jesus Christ. What is the first thing you gotta break down? The unbelief. That's the first thing you gotta break down. It is hard to uproot something that has been found in the ground since birth. It was the see that kind of seed was the seed of unbelief because I mean, I'm gonna go to something. Here. Hey, take your time. Man. Bring it, bring it. Praise God. I'm sorry. Hey, boy, you got me. Over. Let's go. Right, First Peter twenty three. Praise God. Praise and it says, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The problem that we got is that when we are born again, we got rid of the corruptible seed. The seed of corruption is the seed of unbelief. Now, when you go further in the scripture, it says, but of incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed is the seed that's inside of us already, but we just didn't identify it yet. We can recognize the incorruptible seed because the incorruptible seed is the kingdom of heaven. Right? And we are founded, as a believer, you are founded on a system which is the kingdom of heaven. So that, that we can never be broke, we'll never be down in disgust, we'll never be in fear, we'll never be in lack. But the thing that the enemy wants you to keep recognizing is the, the, um, the corruptible seed. That's right. That's right. He wants you to keep remembering how you came into this world and what you used to know, the weeds of this world. The weeds. 
What is the we? The system that can't provide for us. Uh -huh. this, this, this fake system, and I'll call it the government supplies, right? Uh -huh. Because guess what? They give you the thing that you need to form up, and guess what? You're going to need it again. Uh -huh. But what the kingdom of heaven can give you is something that can never run out. Hey. It's eternal. It's eternal. Hey. The things that you see is what? Temporal. Temporal. And the things that are eternal is what? Everlasting. Yes. So the thing about it is that now you have to break that seed of corruption. That's right. Well, how do you break the seed of corruption? Yes. By the word of God. Good. By the word. Good. Everything is broken and destroyed by the word of God. Because yes. Jesus spoke only the scriptures. Right. Jesus always spoke what God said. Right. He yes. talked about the written things, the word of God. That right, that men should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. That is called seed. So that seed is word, that word is power, that word is anointed to break every yoke of slavery over your life. And what the enemy wants you to do is keep believing on a system that will continually fail you. But when you hit rock bottom, that's when you need to be born again. Because somewhere in life, my God, somewhere in life said, you know what? This is not what life cracks up to be. There got to be something more. So now when you are in a place where you've given up, in a place where you say, God, I'm tired of doing this thing called life by myself and by my own strength and on my own ability and all by my own wisdom and understanding. So when you are born again, God erases the system that kept you since birth. Because you were introduced, you were born into what? Sin. So guess what? Sin is called unbelief. Come on. My God. That's what is sin. Mm -hmm. If the enemy can make you unbelieve Come on. and say that God is not able, right. that God is not a strong foundation, right. that God has not come to give you life and more, life more abundantly, right. that God can't give you the house, God can't give you the husband, God can't give you the wife, God can't give you the car, God cannot make the financial needs that you are in need of, but the devil is a liar, yeah. he's been since yeah. like I said at the beginning, yeah. because the nicotine was found in him, he had a seed of corruption, and, and that's the thing that he wants to implant in you, is to say that God no longer loves me, God no longer cares, this is called the weeds of life, this is what, see you gotta understand, are you a weed or are you a seed? But in that, and then you have to understand is that where is your foundation today? Where is your, your who are you liable in? Because if you trust God and lean up to your own understanding, you know that God is able. You know that God is true. You know that God cannot lie. He's not a son of man that he should lie or a son of man that he should repent of anything that he say. Because every word that proceeds out his mouth shall come to pass. The problem of people is that they doubt God and they say that his word will never come to pass but the anointing power of his word his seed when it's planted it breaks the solid foundation which is the corrupted soil that's why Jesus talked about the fourth thing of the, the soil and the thorny ground the rocky places this is called corrupted ground corrupted soil so you got to move from the rocky places in your life and get up and start moving by the word of God you gotta start believing the word of God, because you are in an incorruptible seed. That's right. My God. Go ahead. Bring it, man. This is what this one says in Peter. That's right. This is what it says in Peter. But by the word of God, that's what I said, that's what we're going to use to break the, the seed, right? Of corruption, which liveth and abideth forever. So we see that the word, right, it lives because the word has life. The, 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 the scripture said, the Bible said that his, his word is spirit and life. So we see that the word is something God lives. So that means if God said it and it lives forever, guess what? It has to come to pass. Minister, that's right. It lives. If the word lives, right? It lives. Continue. Continue living. So it cannot die. It cannot fail. It cannot, it cannot come to pass what he said over your life. It cannot fail what he said that you are blessed and highly favored. See, this is not the lie. See, this is true. But what the enemy wants you to do is keep on feeding the weeds of lying, the weeds of deceit, weeds of deception, saying that you're going to be in this place forever. This is how you're going to die in your sin. You messed up. You ain't never going to see the hands of God in your life. But God ain't going to tell you. The word of God is what you got to be founded on in these days. You, you got to live on God's word. His word is holy. 
His word has power. And then when you can speak the word and believe it, because you keep the word plus believing is going to give you an, a, a, an equation, not even a solution to your problem. And that's why you got to believe and know the word so that that very problem that you have, the word can solve it. That's right. You gotta understand what I'm saying. You don't see the problem is the belief system. And that's why the enemy wants you to be a weed and not a seed. You gotta understand what I'm saying. You gotta understand. Because I'm looking for God to do something. You when you when you reach the point where you say, This is not enough for me. I'm better than my situation. I'm better what people say I am. I'm better than the liars and the hypocrites of this world. But I can stand on the word of God and know that I'm anointed by God. I can speak like God. I can act like God and move like God and, and say things like God. And, and that's where you got to get up and know that you are the body of the living God. He's a good temple. Your body is that. It's nothing but the temple of the living God. That's how he said, mortify the body and the corruption of the things of this world. Lustful desires and, and messed up thinking and all these things. That's why you got to be in tune and listen to God and, and know who God is and, and know his voice and know his word. And that way you know his seed and you know how he speak, how he move. And that's why you, when you do things in private, God will reward you openly. So you don't got to come out here like a Pharisee and try to wash your hands and some more. And ceremonial and act like you, like you holy and sanctified. But when you're in the presence of God, in, in the secret place, get in my secret place. I ain't here trying to stunt to you. I ain't trying to act holy to you. But when I step out in open, God will identify who I am to people. And people will know who I am. And you are a child of the living God. He, he knows who you are. See, I'm not with the, with the, the, the lights and the clamor. I'm a humble man of God. And when you know who you are, people can't. No lie. You gotta understand. You gotta know, and that's why you gotta know His word. Believe His word. He is the source and everything that you are, and that's why you got to know. Get rid of the weeds in your life. Get rid of the weeds. Amen. Get rid of the weeds. Yes. Praise God. Right? Yes. He said, when the weed sprout and it form heads, then the weed also appears. Uh -huh. And we know that when God is doing something in your life, you know the enemy want to show you some weeds. He want to show you a counterfeit. He want to show you something that's God, but it's not God. It's funny when you get out of something, another thing happens. And when God wants to do something, you're like that. And we always consistently trying to put somebody in it and trying to say something, trying to move in distraction, move with the weeds to make you think it's Him, but it's not Him. But when you are fully mature in the Word of God, it talks about maturity. When things come to full grownness and in the state of maturity, you can identify what's real and what's not. So you can identify the fake Gucci bag and what's real, but you can identify the word of God. You, 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 you can identify what God is doing in life, huh? but when you have his word and you know that God is real and you know his word is true, huh? you have the sight of God. You can see the thing that's not of him. And that's why you got to be careful about the distraction. Huh? So what are you trying to be, my friend? Huh? Did God assign you? Did God put you in my life? I don't want to be no friend with no enemy because it may well be a weed huh? and not the seed of God. Huh? You got to understand that a seed is by itself in the ground. Huh? And that's why you got to be by yourself for a little while. Huh? It don't matter. See, it's okay with the friends, okay with the family, but sometimes God got to put you in the ground all by yourself. Huh? He got to grow you all by himself. Huh? He got to nurture you all all by yourself, huh? because as much words you get, God's still going to have to deal with you about certain things, huh? and that's why you got to understand his word, and be in his word, abide in the secret place of the almighty, and know that he's covering on the shadow of his wings, and know that he's living, and know that he's not going to give up, huh? the Bible already said that he's not going to leave us, no forsake us, huh? so why do you think God is not there in your life, huh? you, you know his word, you know he's right in the midst, huh? he's waiting to see if you won't speak, huh? he's waiting to see if you won't go believe on his word, what he said about it. See, it could have, said, it could have been said a year ago, two years ago, huh? but you still have to believe on what he told you. Huh? And understand that enemy always wants to come in the night time. Huh? You don't want to come in when nobody's looking. Huh? And see, and so see the discord and weeds uh, that entangle you and get you caught up huh? and get you caught up in lie. Huh? But you know that God is with me. Huh? He'll never forsake you. Huh? And you know that you got to walk uprightly. Huh? You got to walk by faith and not by sight. Huh? Because what the enemy wants to do huh, is put things that's temple in front of you. Huh? He want to give you the cars. He want to give you the houses. And not to say that's not God. Huh? But when you start depending on the thing he gives you, that's when you lose 
him. And that's when you begin to know and understand that's what you call a weed. It's the thing that looked like God, but when you start believing that thing, it seems greater than God. That's when God begins to strip you. God begins to take it away because you place things in the place of God. And that's why you cannot be corrupted because that's what Satan comes to do to see the world and say, You're God. That's right. That's right. That's what he comes to do. Corrupt you. And say that this is it. You come in, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Right? The owner's servants came to me and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Right. Where then did the weeds come from? And the enemy did this, he replied. Can you identify the enemy in his work? Can you identify what the enemy's up to right now? You gotta understand, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But it ain't be stupid and not identify the weapon that's trying to come against you. Because guess what? You gotta fight with the word of God. You gotta fight with the good seed. Huh? And grow that good seed because the enemy's trying to uproot you. In the time when you finally, when you finally seen God's hand work, that's when the enemy's trying to come and say, no, no, baby. I gotta uproot you before this word sink in your spirit. I gotta uproot this thing before it starts to manifest and mature. And that's what he does with the word of God. He wants to take away your unbelief. He wants to take away your belief in God. He wants to take it away. Say you won't be broke forever. You won't be in this place forever. The devil's a liar. Yes. Yes. He consumed you with the worries of this world. Jesus. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Mm -hmm. Why are you worrying about tomorrow? Yes. When God is sitting on the throne. Uh -huh. Bring it. Bring it. Come on, man, God. Come okay. on. Why are you worried? They told tomorrow not to worry about tomorrow. Because even the days is better than his hand and his word. He called the sun to rise and the moon to set. He called the very thing to come into play. So even tomorrow, what you're worried about is even at the hands of God. My God. You worry about how the bitch is going to happen. You worry about how I'm going to eat. Not even the birds worry about how you're going to eat. Are you not more than they? Are you not more than that? Are you, are you not more? See, this is all seed. See, we didn't see. They don't, you might think this is not seed, but this is seed. seed. This is seed. Yes, bring it, bring it. The enemy wants to come and sow some things. But don't mistake the weed as the seed. Right. Right. Don't mistake the things that are temporal, the things that last for a moment, uh -huh. as if it's God. Because the God that me and you serve and that believe in, it's an eternal God. God will not die. But he's the true and living God. He shall reign forever. He, he shall live forever. The, the angels cry holy because they recognize who God is. They, I have no choice but to say God is holy in my life. I, I have no choice but to say God is evil in my life. I break the unbelief over your mind. Don't depend on your job. Don't depend on the things of this world. But understand that you are a seed. That you are a seed that's being nurtured by the word of God every single day. That's why you got to meditate on day and night. Day and night. Stop worrying about how bills going to get paid. Stop worrying about how the marriage is going to work out. If God is in the center, he's going to work it out. If God is in the home, he's going to work out the family. If God is in your home, he's going to work out the finances. It don't matter what is going on today and what happened and the mistakes you made, but God is the master planner. He is the one that sees all things predestined before even the earth was made. God knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened. That's why he's gone. God. That's on. why he's able. That's, right. That's why he's true. Yeah. That's why he is the one that you must depend on. That's why. Yeah. That's why. That's why. Yeah. The owner's servant, I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. The owner's servant came to me and said, Sir, didn't you so good see me off Where did it come from? The weeds. The enemy did this. He replied. He said that. The servant asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, mm -hmm. you may uproot the weed with them. Let both grow together into the harvest. Mm -hmm. At that time, I will tell the harvester, first collect the weeds and tie them in the bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. See, you mm -hmm. learn about some things today, and you're trying to uproot them while God is still doing the work on you. God is still doing something. God is still grooming you. God is still showing you worse. The fear is still around. 
The doubt is still around. Your own dependence is still around. You, you're still worrying about at the appointed time. See, the harvest talks about an appointed time. The appointed time. See, the things that have sight has appointed time. Yes. The things that you see, right? Praise the Lord, thank you. That has sight is that it has an appointed time in your life. See, your, your job and what you must do is know when it's harvest time. You got to know when it's time for God to give you the seed. You got to pick up the sickle. And when it's time, you, you cut the weed. You, you cut some things. You cut the excessiveness of life, the fattiness of life, and, and the things that try to consume you. See, the harvest time identify when it's God and when it's time to get rid of certain things in your life. Yes. Harvest time. Harvest time. When you see that, do you worry about when it's time? But will you see when it's harvest time? You gonna know when things come to full maturity. When you had enough, right? When it's grown to its fullest form, right? And you finally say, you know what? I can't do it on my own. See, that's that's maturity. That's saying that God, I can't do it on my own. That's saying that God, you are you are God in my life. Amen. You are my 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 everything. You are the one that supply my needs. You are the one. That gonna give me what I need. See, that's mature. That's what you call this harvest time. Getting rid of the weeds. Getting rid of the worries. Getting rid of the pain. And the enemy loves to play on the emotions. He loves to play and say, you're not loved. Nobody will never love you. Your family don't love you. Your kids don't love you. That was a lie. Understand what's weed and what's not, and, and, and what's the seed. Understand, right? And it says right here, then gather the wheat and bring it to the barn. See, everything, right, when you'll see now, you got to bring it to the barn so God can manifest it. He can bring it to produce the very thing that you now have come to full maturation and he begin to bless. Uh -huh. But the thing about you, you're not going to see if you don't water it. That's right. See, the things pop up, but you got to identify the wheat. Absolutely. Identify the wheat today in your life. Identify the things that is um, trying to really come into play what God is doing for you right now. Amen. You believe it, but still, unbelief is still in the midst. You still, you still leaning on God, but some part of you saying, God, I don't know if you're gonna do it. No. Stop. Doubt is something. Doubt will tell you that it ain't gonna happen. This is not true. That's what doubt is. But all the enemy has to do is just give you weeds of doubt. That's all he needs to do. But when you know the word of God and you believe it, there's nothing in hell, in devil's hell, that can uproot what God has planned. Amen. 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 His word will strengthen the roots of what he told you. He will strengthen you financially. He will strengthen you in your life, in your mind, what you're facing your relationships, right? In your life, they see, because there's, there's always some kind of doubt that's always lingering around. There's always something always trying to come into play. But let your seed be stronger than your wheat today. Let it be the thing that you continually grow and water with the word of God. Believe it. I'm speaking to myself. I'm speaking to myself today. There's something that enemy always wants to come and do. But when you have to little yourself in the word and you become dependent, see, it's not depending on somebody else's relationship with God. You gotta, you gotta come in relationship with God by yourself. That's right. That's right. It's not to say that your brothers and sisters not there. Mommy not gonna be there, daddy not, they gonna be there. But your relationship is important because guess what? You gonna have to answer to God. You ain't gonna say, God, hold on, let me get my daddy, let me get my mommy, let me get my brother, let me get my sister. No, you gotta answer God for yourself. Yes, yes, God. Yes. You gotta know God for yourself. And hear God. Hear God what he's telling you today. Believe him today. Because some people are in sin of just because of their unbelief. Just because of their unbelief. But we depend on God. The seed, right? The 66 book of seed. 
Amen. You got all kind of seed for all kind of issues. Amen. There's nothing you cannot find today in the word of God that will strengthen you, that will grow you, that will manifest the things that God already has for you. See, it's already in the sea. It's already done. But will you believe? Will you dare to believe God today? Dare to believe the seed you planted and you still hoping and believing God to manifest? Believe what God has planted and know that it will pop up. You will first see the head and then you see the leaf. The leaf you all know by the color of its leaf, you all know it's gone. Because in the in, 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 I'm about to get out the way. I think it's up in the chapter. He talked about he planted seed, and it, and, and, it, and we did this on Friday. Where this where the thing that had popped up, but it burned right away. It was forced by the sun. What God has planted can never burn. If it burns. God is life. He's source of every living thing. All the creepers, and he said he created even the creepers thing got to obey me. The, the little things, the things you don't see got to obey my word. The, the things that you see is big. They got to obey when I speak. They got to obey. Because that's the anointing power of God. He breaks yoke. He breaks slavery. He breaks the heart and pieces of your heart. The unforgiveness, the, the, the unbelief, the, the lack of faith. These are the things that God's word is capable of doing. It's like a hammer. His word is sharper than any two edged sword. Yes, sir. He's in a son the bone and mouth. Spirit. He can, the word is sharp. But use it today to grow your seed. Believe the seed today in what God is doing. I leave you with this. Are you a seed or are you a weed? True that you be today. Praise God. So far, the scriptures.